professionals have standards. Be polite. Be efficient. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Get fuck. Snipers are everywhere. They're one of the most popular classes in all of games, regardless of genre. If you can shoot things, chances are there is a character that does it from long range with precision aim. Soul Knight is no different. With its early theming being more akin to Dungeons and Dragons, the sniper class in the game was an elf, a medium health damage character that has some of the highest single target and AoE potential in all of Soul Knight. In fact, her damage can be so atrocious it makes you wonder why the airbender and custom friends were nerfed from the get go. Meanwhile, this chick was left freely clearing badass works without even getting weapons or a book buff. Now, players like high damage, they like snipers, and they like pretty ladies. Yet for some reason, she's one of the least popular characters in the whole game. Seriously, being an elf main out there is like being a part of a cult. She's barely talked about in any discussion. She's never considered for any challenges. She's always put on the wayside and never acknowledged. Why is that? Why is a well-designed, overpowered, high-damage, massive utility, extremely versatile character that costs gems like her getting ignored and is barely made? Well, let's take a closer look at the best Soul Knight character that no one plays. The elf is a damage character with 6 health, 5 armor, and 200 energy. She's fairly fragile, having more health but less armor than a priestess, so you'll really want to maintain some range with this character as expected. Her starter weapon is by far her best asset, and in my opinion, the best starter weapon in all of Soul Knight, the Ancient Bow. On the surface, it looks like just your average bow. 6 to 12 damage, slows you down when charging, costs 2 energy, nothing special. But when you consider the elf has the reduced charge time buff as a passive, and that this thing has 50 crit chance at full charge, and that it's deathly accurate, regardless of charge, makes you realize the true power of this thing. It deals really solid damage and takes her passive and fires fast enough to maintain 20 DPS, perfect for all worlds and enemy types. Get your ass back here, boy! It also has a stun mechanic where it stuns on crit. Yes, just that ass the kinetic buff on her bow. She just fires and she if she gets a crit, she stuns, and she will get a crit. But hey, Chilorum said, I'm sure it's not that broken. I just I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> This weapon is disgusting sometimes. Did I remind you that half the character starters are so shy they get thrown out in the lobby? Well, the elf just has almost a purple tier weapon from the get-go and her passive makes it better. What's the problem then? Well, she's supposed to be a sniper. But honestly, with how fast she can fire it and how the stun mechanic encourages you to just keep using it over and over, the weapon feels less like a sniper and more like a damn machine. If we don't consider her skill, her playstyle basically devolves into a charge firing this thing on a boss so fast that the button files a violation complaint. It's also worth mentioning that it's one of the only charge-based starter weapons in the whole game, with all the rest being melee weapons, the assassin charge is optional, the minor and paladin's charge gives the utility in the form of AoE damage, and the element invoice charge is utter garbage. So really, the elf already has a somewhat odd weapon to play as, and like previously mentioned, spamming that thing into enemies is the best playstyle which not only takes away from the sniper fantasy, but also makes it pretty awkward to actually use it, since you have to charge it anyway. I mean, hell, the swordmaster's charging weapon was so awkward, they reworked it literally a week later. So while her weapon is strong and almost objectively the best starter in the game, it has the disadvantage of being unwieldy by the average player, a problem that I'll mention multiple times throughout this video. For now though, let's move on to her skills. Focus Fire can only be described as that one bitch from high school that really wants to be deep and complex when she's really just a high school girl, or in our case, a free skill. If you read the description on the game or in the wiki, you'll be even more confused than normal, so I'll explain it my own way. On the surface, this ability looks like your basic type of base type. Sit down, lock her up, and shoot enemies one by one. But it's far from it. The skill button becomes a mode switch button instead of a skill. Missing it at any point regardless of cooldown changes you from regular mode to focus mode. While in focus mode you can't move, you get a one-time use shield around you and using the movement pad aims your current weapon. Yes, this bitch actually gets to aim, the only person to do so in Soul Mode. If you don't use the movement pad, however, she will auto-aim as normal. The skill cooldown is instead an indicator for magic arrows, special arrows that are fucking massive, which fire when you're in focus mode and deals your damage. Sounds simple and not that impressive, yeah? Well, don't be fooled, this is the elf we're talking about, a character so underratedly overpowered that it feels like when Shinron were designing her, they just looked at her and went, fuck it, give her steroids. <laughs> While in focus mode, you get 25 increased crit chance. Every kill in focus mode also gives you plus 3 energy, which stacks with the gain energy on kill buff because of course it does. You're also immune to movement and any knockback during focus mode. Magic arrows deal 8 damage with a huge 4 tile radius AoE that deals half its damage. The third arrow deals more damage and has a higher radius, and every 3 kills you generate a magic arrow. 
Magic arrows also have a built-in scaling with the level you're in, increasing its damage with every sub-level you enter. Also, the shield regenerates for every killing hit, and has damn priority over the Paladin statue shield, meaning that you can stack them both indefinitely. Did you catch all that? Cool, cause nobody had data. Researching for this video made me realize, holy hell, I'm sorry for calling these three power creep. To say that this skill is insane is an understatement. It's the only skill that auto upgrades itself over time in the game, and gives you a damage, defense, energy, and versatility. Accuracy and in line of sight now becomes opportunities for even more damage. And oh my god, going on killing spree with this thing feels like cheating sometimes. You get so many free shields and so much damage and magic arrows for killing any enemy that it becomes less like a roguelike game and more like an only the AI game. It doesn't even take as much skill as you think since you can just let the elf auto aim. And since you need to be in a good position and lot of sight to begin with, aiming feels more redundant honestly. It's basically playing the airbender without the deadly laser comp, meaning that it's far more consistent than even him. So now you may wonder, how the hell is this character not popular when this is her first skill? Literally the only free thing about her. Well, it's because this thing is funky as hell, dog. Standing still in this game, unless it's for a huge burst of damage like the deadly laser, is against everything the game teaches you. In fact, this skill is the exact opposite of everything the game is about. While everyone else worries about movement and the damage is done automatically because of auto-aim, the elf goes the opposite route and takes away movement and makes you focus on aiming and dealing damage, which is incredibly jarring. To say that this ability can be really awkward is an understatement too. Didn't take long for this part of the video, huh? It's not very unrealistic to expect to stand still and constantly adjust your LOS, but it's also incredibly demanding to be able to know your limitations. This is especially true for later levels where you can get kills fast enough for your shield recharge in time, or that you might get hit too much in the time you'd use it to even do so if you get a kill. Basically, this skill tells you to erase everything you know about the game beforehand and start over just for her. In fact, if you can't get used to the skill, this character becomes incredibly damaging to your skill in other characters. Julian. All what this skill gives you has a high cost that goes against everything the other characters demand. So while it's overpowered, yes, it's also offset by how willing the player is to hurt themselves in the learning process. Luckily her other two skills are nowhere near as complex, so let's get them over right now. is her second skill and it makes her fire upwards dropping a rain of arrows that deals AOE damage. Yeah, that's it. This ability is so incredibly simple and honestly incredibly ineffective but it's fun and gives you a different playstyle, AOE damage instead of accuracy. Honestly I almost had nothing to say about this ability other than that with Sora's and the right buffs it's a powerful room clearer, but even without it it's actually pretty solid. The elf doesn't really need any more room clearing because of her first skill, but this is an alternative, less skill demanding option in case you don't want to bother with her first skill. Its only problem is that after you found it, well... Now what? While the other two skills have something to do during the cooldown. The AoE is also blocked by walls sometimes, which does suck. It's not bad, but I wouldn't rush to pay IRL money to get it. I'd recommend other room clearers unless you really like the elves but hit the first skill. Guardian Elf, on the other hand, is... weird. Guys, what do we give our sniper-styled bow and arrow-wielding character? A piercing arrow shot? Bouncing arrows, maybe? A pet. Yeah, I have no idea why the elf has this ability. Once used, the elf summons a guardian elf to assist her in battle. Every use of the skill swaps between guardian elves. Fire elf uses firebolt, wind elf uses the wit force, yes, that one bow, and water elf restores energy, armor, and health when you fully upgrade. This is basically the utility skill of the elf, more akin for support or a unique playstyle. It definitely holds back the elf a little because you lose all the benefits of the first skill, but it makes up for it with the possible utilities. The damage of the first skill is no joke, as the huge AoE, while not comparable to arrow rain, is really impactful. The water elf's sustain is also incredibly clutch, especially since it can be left active on repeat. You can basically have your own pocket priestess as you snipe with the ancient bow. There is a couple of caveats with this. The first one being, well, the wind one is pretty ass. The wind force isn't really the best bow without upgrade and it's seriously underwhelming compared to the fire elf, and with a slow fire rate it doesn't really have its case. The second caveat is that they have to come in order. This ability doesn't store charges and you have to wait 10 seconds between each elf swap, which is a massive deal, especially since you might be relying on the water elf for sustain but you have switched to another one and you have to wait for the order. Yeah, she's basically another special forces or lancer first skill, where you have 3 really good abilities but you have to wait for each one and use them in order, which really blows. If you're on fire elf and you really need armor or healing, the wind elf just goes, <laughs> oh no you don't! Alternatively, if you're on Wind Elf and you want to go fire Elf for more damage because you realize the Wind Elf is ass, you'll have to first waste the Water Elf as well. It's just, say it with me kid, awkward to use. This is by far the most consistent problem that the face of the Elf. You can now easily tell the biggest problem with the Elf. 
Probably one and by far the biggest, she's pretty awkward and demanding to play. The Elk has some of the best and strongest abilities in the game, but Dan doesn't refuse to go that out of any other ability in the game. It's unique, almost too unique, that it takes effort to even start playing this character and getting a role with her even though the reward is high. Her bow is pretty powerful, but you have to get used to its firing tempo. Her first skill is insanely broken, but you have to get used to manual aim and constantly switching modes, standing still and moving. Her second skill is great, but needs specific buffs. Her third skill is good, but needs a rotation. And possessing some of the best abilities in the game doesn't mean much if the average player doesn't really like her. This is the reason why she was left behind, she's simply too odd in comparison with all the other characters. Especially since recently, every character has been changed to it or given the option to be about mobility and movement in addition to high damage. So while the elf is strong and can kick ass, she really won't satisfy the itch of those players that want to kick ass while moving fast. Especially time traveling ninja man. Thing can be really hard for autistic people. There's also the fact that she's the only Soul Knight character which skills does not transfer well into other characters. If you like the Assassin, you like the Rope. If you like the Knight, you like the Berserker. If you like the Lancer, you like the Wormby. And if you like the Officer, you like Masterism. But if you like the Elf, that's really the only thing you're gonna like. Another problem she faces is a lack of cyber fantasy. Well, everything in her kit will tell you she's a sniper. If you squint that really look at it, no, not really. She gets to manually aim, sure, but she's still allowed to auto aim. And since you need line of sight to attack, manually aiming can be useless sometimes and kind of redundant. Unless you want to avoid shooting someone, which you really don't, you can just get away with choosing a good position and just auto aim. Her bow is an excellent sniper weapon, but the fast charge and stun mechanic make it more effective to just spam it. And with her lack of mobility and defense option, except for the buffs of her skill, she just has too much going against her despite her strengths. Don't get me wrong, the elf can and is one of the most broken and overpowered characters in the game. But there is a reason why she managed to sneak under the radar for so long. It's because nobody is willing to put this much effort to play her. Not because she's hard, not because she's weak, but because she's simply too odd and uncomfortable for the average player. So, should the elf be reworked? Honestly? No, I think fine that the elf stays as its hidden gem in the game. While other characters should be reworked due to their weaknesses and others don't need to be reworked because they are in different table places, the elf doesn't need a rework because she's not meant for everyone. It's clear from her playstyle that she's supposed to be the odd duck in the living room, and the unique albeit powerful character that promises great reward for those willing to play her exclusively and learn her gimmicks. In fact, if you haven't noticed, most if not all of her skins are also paid and seasonal token paid. It's clear that she's meant to be the main's character, a character that is primarily meant to be enjoyed on a personal connection instead of just being one of the characters you play. AKA a character made to make people get attached to and buy skins for her. Like my boy Zed, who spent more than 12,000 pounds on shiny pixels in the game because he really likes his zombies. Oh my god! If you like the elves, you'll mainly like the elves and maybe one or more characters, and I think that's a perfectly fine situation for our sniper friend or Snipers are lone wolves after all, and if her gameplay doesn't affect that, at least her situation does. And hey, a lot of the elf mains seem to be happy about it, so who am I to intervene? Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video was originally way lower in the list since I was working on Glasses of Soul Knight video, but honestly I just found it to be a bit tedious to work on. I just prefer doing individual character videos for now. Let me know if that video idea interests you though, I can push myself to make it. The script is actually already done. Consider subscribing to the channel to help me get to my first 1000, it'll be really appreciated. Adding the bell to see my next upload. Thanks for watching and see you next time.